welcome to Ballet Money. It's my hometown. Let's start the show. There it is, Finvoy Road. This is where I lived for the first 22 years of my life. I'm taking a walk up there again. Our family knew virtually everybody who lived in every house along the road. Our neighbours were like friends. We were in and out of each other's houses for cups of tea, birthday parties, and calling round at Christmas with presents. It's a far cry from today's life when most people don't even know who lives next door. Or if they do, they don't get on with them. Well, I think we're getting pretty close now. The next one's our next door neighbour. We're getting very near now. I told you we were close. Well, it's just coming up. I don't remember all these trees at the front of my neighbor's house. No, I don't think they're in. And here it is. I recognize those railings from back in the day. This is it. The people who bought the house, they did a lot of work to it. And it looks really good. The pathway is much improved. Oh, I remember those pillars. Back in the day, um, we called the house Fair Winds. We had the garage at the back. I don't really want to stand right in front of it. I don't want the people who live there now to think I'm stalking them. I don't come back here very often. I think this is probably about the fifth time that I've been here in the last 25 years or so. I don't know when I'll be back. You see, a lot of it's changed. It's not how it was when I lived there. Although these railings, they're original and um, they used to be red. I think they were used to be blue at one point as well. The tree, it was a cherry tree uh, when we were there, and that was my mother's rockery. Well, I think it's time to move on, don't you? Well, there I am, outside Les Ligon Primary School. I remember the day I started, when I was about four years old. And you may recall, in my birthday episode, I was saying that on that first day I clung to my mum's skirt, not wanting to go in. It looks as though the paint on these railings has uh, not even been changed since then. Ah, that's the old, um, that's the door, that's the door that goes into the school. It didn't have a sign like that in those days. It was an old rusting sign that just said, let's live in primary school. But they've got their own crest and everything now. Do you know, 
It's been great seeing the old place again. Maybe come back again one day. Well, I spent five years at Ballymoney High School as well. Well, apart from myself, Ballet Money's most famous sons are the late motorcyclists, Joey and Robert Dunlop. Now, there is a memorial to them here in Ballet Money. So let's take a little look at the memorial garden. And Joey's name also lives on in his bar, Joey's Bar, which sits next to Ballymoney Railway Station. Behind me, this is the old Ticketmaster's office. And I can remember coming here as a child and there was a coal burning fire in at the back while the master was looking after the station. I'd come in with my mother and we would actually just come in to, to stay warm for a while. You can catch a train from Ballet Money to Belfast in one direction and Derry stroke London Derry in the other. Well, I love this mural of a cow and it is probably here because Ballymoney is also known as Cootoon or Cow Town and that's because of the number of farmers in the area. And here is my mother's favourite clothes shop, The Winsome Lady, and it's still here to this day. Well, I've mentioned a couple of times before about the stamp machine at Ballymoney Post Office that churned out all those 50p's many years ago. Well, the post office is no longer here, but it's still the Royal Mail Sorting Office. And the stamp machine would have been just around here, um, attached to the original wall. So this is where it was that day when I became very rich indeed, as a 10-year-old probably. Thanks for watching the show. Please continue to comment, like, and especially subscribe. Thanks!
this is the journey from my house into Bally Money. So Finvoy Road, I know it so well. The number of times that I walked up and down here to go up the town, as my mother used to call it. And I used to cycle up here as well. I had a, a BMX and I'd race up and down. And I've got some injuries and uh, to, to prove it, I ended up having a terrible fall, uh, ripped my arm open one time. And I've still got the, uh, the scar where the stitches are. So we're at the end of Finvoy Road now and it's much busier than it would have been 30 years ago when I lived here. The houses opposite my old house didn't exist back then. So here we are and we're heading into the town centre. It always took about, well I always felt it took about 20 minutes to walk in, in actual fact. When Paul and I were over here um, a few years ago, it only took us 12 minutes, so it just shows you, as a child, you think time is much longer than it actually is. Just on the left-hand side, this where it says old and new, that used to be McKeever's, and it was a newsagent's and a, a sweetie shop. And my brother used to call my stomach my kiever because that's where I filled myself up with bars of chocolate and got fatter and fatter. Much more traffic these days than way back then. In fact, I can, I can remember the very first memory of my life occurred on this road. It's funny how it's all flooding back because um, my father used to own Vo uh, not Vauxhall, um, Austin Maxis, and um, the Maxi broke down along here one day, and I can remember standing outside the car, waiting, I guess, for it to be towed away. And look, it's a Tesco now, but just behind that Tesco sign, there's a few old houses. And there was another sweetie shop along here called Bobby's. And uh, Bobby was this great big fat man. And um, there was always this really weird damp sort of smell in the shop I can remember. But it was an old traditional sweet shop. You'd go in and it had all the, the jars behind the counter. So on the right hand side, we've got the Joey and Robert Dunlop Memorial Garden. And on the left hand side, well actually just there is Max Snacks. I think it was called something else way back in the day, but I used to get my battered sausages in there. Um, and it's next to Castle Street Car Park. And just coming up, you will see a tree. It's not just any old tree. It is the tree, the tree that my mother and I would sit under waiting for my father to pick us up after we had been up the town. So on the right hand side, that takes you down to the railway station. And on the left hand side, Paul, if you can move to the left hand side, that is the bottom of Main Street and the Winsome Lady, which was my mother's favourite clothes shop. So we now move into an area that is uh, mostly new. Lidl was definitely not here back in the day. I wish it was. It looks absolutely fabulous, that one. And there's a Poundland on the, the right-hand side. That wasn't there. We're going to turn left up Union Street and we're going to pass the house that I lived in after my family home was sold, after my mother died. So it's on the left-hand side. Just, wow. It, I mean, this. So look at all the satellite dishes. That's That's the thing. In fact, I can see a sign saying seal agreed, and I'm wondering if that is actually on the house that I lived in. Which number was it? It was 49. So we'll have a look. I actually think it was, because it was the second house along. 51, oh, it's not, Four, uh, it's the third house along then. 
to the one next to it, but I lived at 49 for a couple of years, I think. So we come up to the top of Union Street and we're gonna turn right and we're going to stop off briefly at the first place I ever was in my life, the hospital where I was born. So this is where it all began. I was born here at the Robinson Memorial Hospital on the 18th of March, 1972. It was a Saturday and I believe it was at around 12.57 p.m. So I was a lunchtime baby and that's probably why I'm always eating. I just haven't changed <laughs> 50 years ago this year. So this is Ballymoney Health Centre and it sits next to the hospital many's a time I was in there. Um, the worst experience that I probably had was I sat on a hot water bottle when I was about 11 years old. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. Don't do that at home or anywhere. And uh, the hot water bottle burst and I scalded my bottom and I had to go into the health center every day for a month to have this special gauze replaced. But they said, the nurses who got to know me very well, said that um, they'd, never, they'd, they'd never seen a bottom recover so quickly. <laughs> so leaving the hospital now, we head back into Ballymoney Town Center. And we're gonna see how things have changed over the years. It's been three years since I've been here and we've had a little look around already and it seems quite different even in um, that short period of time but definitely since 30 odd years I lived here it's completely changed. So here we have on the left hand side the flash in the pan another regular carry out place I went to and also on the left hand side just where that lorry is sitting. It's called, oh, it's a spa now. Oh, well, that used to be Esler's. And Ray Esler was a news agent. And I used to go in there for my, for my papers. So we're coming into the town center. Straight ahead where it says Victoria Street, that used to be a shop called The Music Box. And it was Trevor Smith who owned it. And uh, that's where you get all your, your records and stuff and cassettes. And I would, uh, would pre-order stuff because I had a really bizarre interest in music um, insofar as the... <laughs> I always bought TV theme tunes, and he managed to get me the theme tune to the, the BBC snooker, which was amazing. Um, on the right-hand side, on the corner where it says four hours, that used to be a cafe called Chat and Chew. And if you see that round window up there, that was where my father worked. That was his office at um, McElderry's, um, where he was the charter accountant. And I actually got to go up there a few years ago it's been renovated since then, but it still looked pretty much then as it did um, way, way back 40 years ago, I suppose we're talking now. So it looks as though we're sitting in a bit of a traffic jam to go into the town centre. The street that we're going to turn on to, Linen Hall Street, is very sadly, it's almost completely derelict. Um, it used to be thriving. The VG supermarket used to be there. The post office used to be there. The post office has since moved to an out-of-town location. Um, 
well, almost out of town. It's on the sort of the outskirts of the town centre itself. I discovered, uh, but Linen Hall Street had a big um, furniture store, and it suffered a fire, and that was the main sort of building on that street opposite the supermarket. And once it went, the whole street just went into decline. So you can see all the, the hoardings are up. They've ripped the buildings down. But the last time we were here, there were actually um, signs, like sort of pictures of what it could look like or what maybe it did look like. But all that seems to have gone now as well. Um, but it's still one of the main routes into the town centre itself, which is why there's so much traffic here. Although with the building being ripped down, it now gives a, a partial view to some of the uh, the other buildings across the way that you could never have seen from that angle before. So here we are, this is Linen Hall Street, and you can see the old signage of the store. It says, Test at Seeds Home Bakery. That was never there in my day. That is where the VG was. So there was sign over the signs over the top of that saying VG and then it became a different supermarket after that uh, and the post office but they've taken all those signs down from over the years and that's that looks like it's the original one Wallace McClure of course yes it was Wallace McClure before it became the VG closing down sale I don't know what what was closing down Albert Macaulay, that's the Bible and Bookshop, and that's where I used to go to get all my stationery. Um, even though it's like a Bible-based store, it's, it sells lots more than that. It's, it was a real, uh, you know, it was the go-to place for your, your pens and your pencils and your notepads. But here we are at the end of Linden Hall Street. The Northern Star Bar, maybe Paul would like to go in for a drink later on today. But we come on to High Street now, and this is where I worked for a few years with the Chronicle, which was based in Coleraine, but I was uh, seconded to the Bally Money office for, for a while. Um, and the office for the Chronicle is actually, it, it's, it's still there, but it's mo slightly moved location. So on the left hand side, first of all, you will see the clock tower. That used to be um, Harold's Cafe, which I, I mentioned on my birthday episode where I went for all my meals. And the door next to it, to the right hand side of the clock tower, that is where the Chronicle was. But you can see now it says Ballymoney Chronicle, so it's moved slightly down. So off High Street, we turn right onto Church Street, if I remember correctly. And what have we got up here? Well, sadly, it's no longer here, but along Church Street is where Dunn Stores was, my favorite store, of course. And it's that building that says recently refurbished retail unit. That was Dunn's. Robert Gold, that's one of the old stores that I remember. Um, oh, it seems to be closed today. Up here to the left-hand side was my, my old dentist, Mr. Holdstock. And I used to get gas and air. Is it still, oh look, yes, Ryada Dental Center. Indeed, it is still there. And straight ahead, Paul, that was North Antrim College where I went for one year after I finished school. So now we're coming back onto the high street, but from a slightly different angle. And on the left-hand side coming up, that was where the council used to meet. In that building there, I used to go to council meetings and report on those. So we come back down onto high street now. And previously we turned left onto Church Street, but now we're going to go straight on down onto Main Street. 
and we were down here earlier and I just commented to Paul um, that there's only a handful of shops from my day that are still there. Um, so many things have changed and uh, most of the shop fronts have changed as well, the signs, the, the signages and everything. Well, I wish they had a subway back in my day. Bob and Burt's, that is like a, a chain of coffee shops and we went in there the last time we came to buy money, but they're, they're all over parts of Northern Ireland now, but back in my day it didn't exist. Uh, coming up pretty soon on the right hand side, you will see um, McCurdy Hamilton. There it is, travel. Now, they always did have a travel agent, but uh, there used to be a department store as well. Straight on the left hand side, Osborne's Butcher, that was there. And staying on the left hand side, just past the white van, W&J Walker, that's where I used to go to see Santa Claus. Simpsons News Agents <gasps> seems to have closed down. And on the right hand side, McElroy's, which was a, a yeah, it was a shoe, a shoe shop, bootmaker it says there, that sadly seems to have gone as well. But there's a few bits and pieces coming up that are still there from my day. What about this castle? Cross? No, that wasn't there. That was that. I mean, it's 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 old now, but it it wasn't there. That didn't exist when I was here. On the left hand side, J D Hart and Son and Other Butchers. That signage I think is similar, if not the same, as it was when I lived here. And the top ten hairdresser hasn't changed. On the right hand side, the Manor Hotel, which was always a quite run down, looks as though it's quite grand now. And on the left hand side is the Winsome Lady, which was my mother's favourite clothes shop after the other one that uh, was Ballantine's, I think it was, that closed down. Now, if you just, it's over on the right hand side, where it says Piccolo Restaurant, that used to be a Chinese takeaway. And I used to go there on a Monday night after the council meeting. They stayed open until about half past midnight, I think. And if the council meeting finished around midnight or whatever, they usually did run on quite late. If I was lucky enough, I'd get into the Chinese takeaway and I always ordered king prawn, uh, sweet and sour, king prawn and fried rice. And the lady behind the counter got to know me and I was basically called king prawn. So King Prawn would go <laughs> <laughs> for his late night munchies on a Monday night. So why am I showing you a picture of a tree? Well, this isn't just any old tree. This is my tree. Or rather the tree that my mum and I sat under many times after we'd been up the town to do our shopping and we'd be waiting for my dad to pick us up and drive us home. I always come to see the tree, sit down and contemplate all those years ago in Ballymoney. Well, that's it from Ballymoney, and I think it's only fitting that I finish the show at the tree. It gave my mum and me shelter all those years ago, and it's given me some shelter from the wind here today. We'll see you next time. Bye.